So yeah, you may have an unintended partnership, which is not good. We trust you, Yermo. Oh, okay. Well, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're also associated, subject to liability associated with your product. So if you build a product and and that app and it tells you to drive into the mall and run over all the little children, you know, you're liable for that. Yeah, well. you have a buy now button in your app and load systems calling. Yeah. 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 Right. So next <coughs> so just know you have unlimited liability. So now so now how do you, how do you deal with that? So one of the ways of dealing with liability is this uh, it's one choice of any is the C corporation. And you get the limited liability. It's wonderful. It's really hard to pierce the corporate veil as long as you're not fraudulently setting up the cor corporation to be your alter ego. You know, you have limited liability. You have some formalities, though, right? Yeah, you have yeah. Some, yes, you have some formalities. <laughs> when you set up the corporation, you want to, you, you know, you want to walk like a corporation, talk like a corporation. You want to have your you know, your appointments, your annual minutes, uh, you want to uh, do your filings with the state, <coughs> you know, uh, file your uh, state, like in Virginia, the State Corporation Commission, your annual reports, um, and you want to uh, open up a bank account in the name of the corporation, you got to get an EIN number, employer identification number from the IRS. So you definitely want to, uh, you know, and we can help you with that if we were working with you to to uh, make sure you follow all the corporate formalities so that you don't have the piercing the corporate veil problem. Uh, but there is a double taxation problem with C corporations. One thing to clarify, what does it mean to pierce the corporate veil? To pierce the corporate veil means that a plaintiff suing you would try, try and say, Your Honor, the, the corporation is this person's alter ego. They are one and the same, and there should be no liability, uh, limited liability protection here because there was no separate being. A, the way the IRS and the way the uh, uh, laws of the United States treat a corporation, they, it is actually defined as a person with a small p, P-E-R-S-O-N. So it is defined to be its own separate being. Uh, and that's why, like Sanjay said, respecting the corporate formalities uh, gives more assurance that and makes it far more far more difficult for a plaintiff to say there really was no corporation here. It's an alter ego of this individual, and this individual should be personally liable. So, in other words, when you have partners in a corporation, you want to make certain that everybody follows the rules and the paperwork carefully, so that you don't lose your house when I make a mistake. Exactly. All right. Exactly. I still don't trust you. <laughs> Next. <laughs> But well, you have the double taxation problem. Now, if this slide doesn't make all of you go out and vote Republican, I don't know why. Oh, Will. No. Oh, oh, oh. Sanjay from the West Coast here. Yeah. Cor <laughs> corporate tax rate above 75K is approximately 35%. Personal tax rate, uh, once the certain tax cuts, I won't say the word, uh, expire, 39.6. Total tax on income. Uh, is distributed as dividends. So $100 of income distributed from the company to the shareholder becomes $39.26 because it's taxed first at the corporate level, then it's taxed again at the shareholder level. Now, again, this is not a problem if you are not, you know, this does not impact, for example, when you take a salary, if you're taking a two hundred dollars or $300,000 a year salary from your C corporation, you have a technology company, and you're paying yourself a nice hefty salary, and you give the, the company's going like gangbusters, you give yourself a half million dollar bonus, that's all <laughs> uh, not taxed at the corporate level because the corporation, if it pays you 300000 has $600,000 in income, $300,000 expense right there, so it gets to deduct that, and it doesn't pay taxes on that. It, it's an expense item, so it lowers its taxable uh, taxable income by that amount. Uh, it, where you get into trouble is when the co company is paying out dividends. So most technology companies avoid the double taxation problem, even if they're a C corporation, by merely not distributing dividends. They just don't declare dividends. Most venture-backed companies never uh, pay dividends. Even if you're in your documents, you're in your Series A documents, the uh, uh, the the preferred stock will say an eight uh, percent dividend <laughs> uh, if and when paid, if declared and, and when paid. So you know, I have yet in all my twenty some years of doing venture capital deals, have yet to see a, a, a technology company pre IPO 
uh, ever distribute any dividends. So you just don't do it. So why put this line up? I mean, I, I agree. Well, because if we didn't, we we just need to we just need to say like you know because there, believe it or not, there are people who then get shareholders who do want dividends. So I ha I do have clients who have had uncles, aunts, or certain uh, private investors give them money for their business and say, look, I'm not going to sit around waiting for you to sell this company. In a venture cap back company. You know, there's going to be an exit. The VCs don't give you money for a lifestyle company or something you're going to run for 10, 15, 20 years. They want their money back in a maximum three to five years. They want to get out. So either through an IPO or through a sale of the company to someone else. Um, so they don't want any dividends. But in a lifestyle business that you're running, and if you have some other, some passive investors, they may say, look, so I want to start getting some dividends so I can take some money out of this. The certificate's nice on the on the wall there, but I'd like some cash. Uh, next slide. Yeah, oh. I have a question here. Could you just buy back some of their stock instead <coughs> of issuing a dividend? Would that do the same thing? Or? Well, I think you're talking about corporate redemption, and that's a, a whole nother animal. But I mean, it, you know, it certainly if if you know if they accrue dividends, um, usually what happens is a lot of investors when those dividends accrue. And they aren't paid, like with the VC money, they uh, it automatically accrues whether you're declaring it or not. Then uh, they usually take that in extra stock at a time. They usually have the option uh, if they negotiate it well. They have the option that when the company goes public, uh, you know, if, if there's if they gave you a two million dollar investment and then there's five hundred thousand in accrued but unpaid dividends, they'll actually get to convert to two point five million dollars worth of of common stock when they convert over. Uh, next. So other options, and I'm going to breeze through some of this because I'm happy that somebody ever wanted to come over to talk about a lot of these more in depth. But just know that other options is to be a partnership, but you have an unlimited liability for a general partnership. There's limited liability partnership and, um, and you know, where you can have a, a certain amount of limited liability. Uh, S corporation, you have limited liability, but strict rules on types of securities. Uh, you can only have one class of stock. You can have voting and non-voting common without violating the one uh, class rule. But if you have a preferred stock, you know, you blow the S election. You can't be an S any longer. Um, and also the type of shareholders you have. You can't have any, you all have to be individuals. They can't be any institutions. So if a VC comes in, you blow the S election there. Uh, limited liability company is very popular, but uh, again, if you're going to be going public or being venture back, they're going to make you convert to a C corporation anyway. Quick question there. What is the charges per hour to go and talk about this stuff? Oh, I'm happy to, if someone wanted to come in and talk off the clock for some of the details on this for like, you know, the first hour, you know, something like that, and, and, and answer any particular questions since we don't have unlimited time here this evening, although, you know, people seem to be interested in this. So, but I mean, we're happy to answer. You know, we'll stay afterwards if you have particular questions, uh, but, you know, we, we usually are happy to sit down with someone for a little while and chat with them off the clock, and then if there's a value that we can start providing, then we can talk talk to you about, you know, going on the clock. Can S convert to C, and why would you pick LLC over S? <coughs> uh, LLC over S because there's a lot of more flexibility in an LLC uh, than an S corporation. LLC can have another corporation or, or an, a non-individual owning it. So if you're going to be, sometimes people want to set up uh, different uh, S corporations or LLC that will own another operating entity. If you want to have the intellectual property up in a holding company, you know, and you want that to own a chunk of uh, of an operating company and somebody else investing in the operating company, you can only do that with an LLC. You can't do that with an S corporation. Um, so. You know, and, and believe me, I have a tax partner who gets into all these nuances, uh, but it, generally an S corporation, you can convert, but if you convert uh, some of these things, you get what's called building capital gains issues when you go from one entity to the other. So, you know, happy to follow up with you on that. Next. All right, so let's get into the fun part, the money. <laughs> um, startup or C capital. Um, 
you know, there's three basic types of financing you can get other than debt. This is all equity. Uh, there, <laughs> there is, uh, of course, you can go to Silicon Valley Bank or Square One Bank and, uh, uh, or Comerica and get bank, uh, financing uh, for technology companies. But basically, you have friends and family or what we used to call the three friend, F rounds. Yeah, friends, family, and fools. Friends, right? family, and fools. Uh, and then you have your angels, which are, you know, which we'll get into, and then your venture capital next. 